Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about basics of process scheduling. So let us start with what is process scheduling. Now, if he wants to define process scheduling, then it is an activity of a process manager that handles the suspension of running process from the CPU and the selection of another or we can say new process on the basis of some particular strategy or some algorithm. That means it is a one type of activity that is to be performed by a process manager. Now, what is process manager? Process manager is nothing but a part of operating system which manages all the processes in our system. So it's activity that is performed by a part of operating system that is a process manager that will handles the suspension of the running process from the CPU. So whenever it is required to suspend any process due to some condition at that time this process manager will handle the suspense of the running process and after suspending the current running process the selection of another process is to be done by process manager depending or we can say basis of some particular strategy or some algorithm that is the entire activity is nothing but a process scheduling and the part of operating system that makes the choice of new process is known as scheduler means the part of operating system who will select the new process to be executed that part of OS is known as scheduler and the algorithm that is used to select a new process is nothing but a scheduling algorithm. Now process scheduling is an essential part in case of multi-programming operating system. So it plays a very important role in case of multi-programming OS. Next move further objectives or we can say is goals upon scheduling. First one is fairness that means giving each process a fair share of CPU means each and every process within a system should get CPU fairly. There should not be unfair in between all of these processes. Second one is balance that means keep all the parts of system as much as possible so that you will get maximum through output. So here all the parts should be maximum busy. Third one is through output that is the number of processes that are completed per a time unit means up within a particular type number of processes that are completed is known as through output and it should be maximum means within a particular time limit maximum number of processes should be completed. Next one is turnaround time that is a time to execute a process from the submission to the completion. We can also say that it is a time between submission of any task and the completion of any task means submission time to completion time. It should be minimum means once we submit any task it should be executed as early as possible. So it should be means turnout time should be a minimize if we wants to give the formula if he wants to define in terms of formula then turnaround time is equal to process finish time minus process arrival time keep in mind this formula this formula is used in our algorithms so remember this formula for algorithm next one is cpu utilization it is a percentage of time that the cpu is busy in executing a process means how much time you are keeping your CPU busy so that maximum number of processes should be executed and CPU utilization must be a maximum. Keep your CPU as much as possible busy so that you will get maximum through output means maximum number of processes should be completed within a short time. Then after response time that is the time between issuing a command and getting the result it should be minimum means immediately you must get result once you submit your command or once you issue a command to execute it. And last one is 
waiting time that is a amount of time a process has been waiting in a ready queue how much time a process need to wait in a ready queue and it should be minimum means we must have to minimize waiting time if you wants to give the formula then waiting time is equal to turnaround time minus actual execution time again please remember this formula this formula is used in next lecture during scheduling algorithm so these are the various objectives of scheduling or we can say is goals of a scheduling next move further different types of scheduler we will directly compare e all the three types of schedulers mainly there are three types of scheduler long term scheduler short term scheduler and medium term scheduler long term scheduler is also known as job scheduler short term scheduler is also known as cpu scheduler and medium term scheduler is also known as process swapping scheduler this long term scheduler select the process from a pool and load them into memory for the execution so this scheduler is mainly used to load your process into memory for the execution whereas the short term scheduler will select those process which are there in ready to queue for the execution so we can also say that the short term scheduler will allocate cpu to the process that is lies in a ready queue then after medium term scheduler this scheduler can reintroduce the process into memory and execution can be continuous so it will reintroduce it will again introduce your process into memory for the execution here the speed is less than the short term scheduler and the speed if the short term scheduler is fastest among all these both of these scheduler where speed is in between short term as well as long term scheduler it is almost this long term scheduler is almost absent or minimal in time sharing system whereas the short term scheduler is also minimal in time sharing system whereas this medium term scheduler is a part of time sharing system this scheduler is used in time sharing system now we will see this where these schedulers are placed in queuing diagram we have already seen this diagram that is process state diagram or process state queue diagram now in this diagram where all these three schedulers lies first one is long term we have already seen long term scheduler this long term scheduler what it will do it will select process from a pool and load them into memory for the execution so this long term scheduler is there whenever your process is to be admitted into the ready queue this long term scheduler will put your process into ready queue now once your process will be there in ready queue means ready to execute this short term scheduler will allocate this processor to this process that is lies in the ready queue and this medium term scheduler will reintroduce means here if the time slice is over time slice means we have allocated a particular time to execute any process and if the time is over or completed but still your process is not completed then that process is forcefully suspended by operating system the operating system will forcefully take this process out of that process so in this case your process will be reintroduced or reentered into this ready queue this reentered or reintroduced by medium term scheduler so here medium term scheduler will work so in this way this long term scheduler will submit your process into ready queue short term scheduler will allocate processor to this process that is in ready queue and once the time slice is over at that time this process is reintroduced or reentered into ready queue by this medium term scheduler so in this way all these scheduler will work next move for the different types of scheduling algorithm these are the various scheduling algorithms that is used in our system first come first serve that is fcfs 
shortest show first also known as SJF, shortest remaining time next also known as SRTL, round robin also known as RR and priority that is preemptive as well as non preemptive priority algorithm. We will see each and every algorithm in detail in next videos. Thank you very much.